So, and, and by the way, let me say, like, generally, I'm pro cult. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> like, I'm actually quite pro cult. Um, mm. Well, the reason it's the same reason I'm pro fringe, right? Which is like mm. you're, you're going to have pe- if you're going to have people who are going to be thinking new things, they're going to tend to be these kinds of people. They're going to be people who are on the fringe. They're going to come together in groups. When they come together in groups, they're they're going to exhibit cult like characteristics. What you're saying resonates. Yeah. Everything you're saying makes sense. But how did you get to these conclusions? Like, like it seems that like accepting fringe and accepting, like accepting the chaos of San Francisco. Like, oh, this is good. This is a part of it. This is how this works. This is why it works. Yeah. Like, how did you develop that perspective? Well, it's just if you take a historical perspective, it's just like okay. I mean, it's like uh, just an easy example. If you, if you like rock music, it just basically came. Modern rock and roll basically came from the Haight Ashbury in the basically mid to late '60s, and then from Laurel Canyon, which was another one of these sort of cultish environments in the mid to late '60s. And there was like specific moments in time in both of these places and you know basically all of the great rock and roll from that era that determined everything that followed basically came out of this. so you know do you want that or not right right <laughs> <laughs> if you want it that, you know that's what you get um i'll give you here's a crazy here's a crazy um you, you, well, the, it's the um uh there's the other book about laurel canyon that's even crazier than chaos it's the book called uh, weird scenes in the canyon oh, oh okay it. you would love this one so so laurel canyon was like the hate ashbury of los angeles canyon. right so laurel, laurel canyon was like the music scene the, the sort of music and drug and hippie scene of the it's laurel canyon is actually where the hippie movement started um there was actually a specific group in laurel canyon in la in about 1965 um there was a guy named vito Polikas. Um, and, uh, and it, he had a group called the Freaks, and they they were like a they were like a nonviolent version of the Manson cult, um, and it was all these young girls, and, and they basically would go to clubs, and they had the, they were the ones to do the beads and the hair and like all the the leather and like all the all the hippie stuff, like they got they got that rolling. Um, and so, like, they, they were they were in Little Canyon. And in Little Canyon, it was, like, ground zero. There was, like, this moment where it's, like, Jim Morrison, The Doors, and Crosby, Stills, and Nash, and Frank Zappa, and was it John Phillips, um, and um, was the Mamas and the Papas, and the Birds, and the Monkeys, and, like, all of these, like, iconic bands of that time basically catalyzed over about a two-year period in Little Canyon. Um, the, the, conspiracy, the conspiracy theory in this book, basically, is that the whole thing was an op, and the, 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 it was a military intelligence op. Um, and the, the, the evidence for the theory is that there was an Air Force uh, uh, military propaganda production facility at the head of Laurel Canyon called Lookout Mountain, uh, which, uh, right, which today Jared Leto owns and actually lives Yeah, in, li- so I was just going to say that. Yeah, but it's, it was a, in, in that era in the 50s through the 70s, it was a vertically integrated uh, military, yes, uh, it was a, a production facility uh, for film and music. Um, but by the way, have you met Jared Leto? Uh, I, I, briefly, yeah. One of the most interesting yeah. guys I've ever talked Incredible. to. Incredible, and it makes total sense. Totally this... normal, like yeah. really fun to talk to, yeah. Yeah. not like what you would think of as a famous actor at all. Yeah. I had dinner with him and drinks. He's a fucking great guy. But he lives in a military... Um, he showed me all the pictures. <laughs> he showed me. I'm like, this is wild. Yeah, so... Let, it's amazing. If you believe the moon landing was faked, this is where they faked it. Like, uh, this, this, this is... I thought they were supposed to do it in the Nevada desert. No, these are the sound... Because they had sound stages. Oh. They had totally contained sound stages. They had full sound production capability. Um, and so the, the theory goes, basically... That was, so there were three parts to the, the conspiracy theory. So one is they had the production facility right there, mm-hmm. right where all these musicians showed up. Two is the musicians, like a very large percentage of these young musicians um, were... Uh, sons and daughters of senior U.S. military and intelligence officials. Including Morrison. Including Jim Morrison, whose father was the head of naval operations for the Vietnam War at the time. Um, and there were these other, I forget which ones, but there were these other musicians at the time where their parents were like senior in like military, like psychological operations. And like that's, that's all real, like that's all documented. And then third is the head of the Rand Corporation, who was one of the inspirations for the Dr. Strangelove character in the movie. Um, so he was the guy doing all the nuclear plan, planning for nuclear war. He lived right in the heart of the hippies uh, in Laurel Canyon, Whoa. in this in this famous house that's that, that's still there. And so the the theory basically goes that the anti-war movement before the hippies was basically a square movement. It was all these basically young people, very clean cut. The men were all wearing. If you look at old like Vietnam War protests, like everybody's all like dressed up like they're going to business meeting. It was like and it was developing into a real threat. And so the theory is the hippie movement and rock and roll and the drug culture of the '60s was developed. Uh, in order to basically sabotage the anti-war movement, wow. right? Uh, and it, which, which basically is what happened, right? Because then what happened is the anti-war movement became associated with the hippies, and that caused Americans to, right, decide what side they were on, and then that led to Nixon being elected twice, which was also a part of chaos because that right. was the idea behind the Manson family and get yeah. funneling acid to them. The facility was equipped with a soundstage, screening rooms, film storage vaults, and naturally a bomb shelter. During its 22 years of operation, Lookout Mountain Laboratory produced approximately. 6,500 classified films for the Department of Defense and the Atomic Energy Commission documenting nuclear test series such as Operation Greenhouse, Operation 
and Teapot and Operation Buster Jangle. Thank you. 